Welcome back to my studio. I'm Mary Carrado from Portland, Oregon. And today I'm going to show you one of Amy's fun products that I just love using. But this is that time of year when you want to do something fun, something cute for your house, maybe something special for a friend. Um, you know, just it's kind of a gift giving time of year. So this is when I love to pull out Amy Howard's copycat and Today we're gonna to do a cute little tray. And I got this design online and I blew it up so that it will fit into the tray and I will be able to transfer this image into it, paint around it with Amy Howard's One Step Paint and finish it with some matte sealer, some waxes and just have a cute Halloween tray. To get started, we are going to turn the camera down but before we do, be sure to say hi. And if you would, are interested in winning your own copycat, tell us your name, tag three friends, share the video, and you will go into a drawing and possibly win your own copycat. This is really fun stuff. Okay, let's get started. Let's turn the camera down and I'll show you the process. So here's my little tray that I got just at the craft store. For the image to transfer, you need to add some one-step paint to your tray. So I have Amy Howard's One-Step Ballet White. I gave it a shake, but I'll do it again. And let's open the paint, and we are going to paint the bottom. I'm just gonna paint the bottom. I wanna paint, because as you see, this will transfer, and hopefully this black will transfer beautifully, and then the rest I'm gonna paint black around it. So I'll. All you'll see is the white in this area. Okay. So just use an Amy Howard synthetic brush for your one step paint and just paint. It's as easy as that. I'm going with the grain, so I'm turning my tray. And we are going to do two coats. This one step is a chalk base paint, no VOCs. It will dry within about 20 minutes. So it's very, very easy to use. And you will want two coats. That was it. I'm gonna let this dry, do another coat, and then I'm going to start to cut out my transfer and show you how to use it with the copycat. Now what we need to do is we need to get some scissors and we are going to cut out our image. Okay, so if we place this in here, we definitely need to trim just a tiny bit because I want this as centered as possible. So it will transfer like that and then I will come back and finish painting the edges. Okay, now what we wanna do is we are going to be adding the copycat to the painted surface. Make sure everything's, there's no dust and all that good stuff and then we will take the image and we will lay it down this way so that it transfers onto the painted surface, okay? So just know your image is going to come out in reverse. If you have any words on your image, make sure they are already in reverse. Otherwise they will come out and they will be backwards. So be careful if you have words. I have a cup that I am going to put my copycat in. Okay. There you go. It's a white, thick liquid. And this is a little tiny bit wide. I don't have a smaller one. I'm just going to trim off the size of this. So now it's a little smaller. Go into my cup much easier. Okay, so just fill up your foam brush. 
and just generously add the copycat to the base of the tray. On as smoothly as possible. And now we will take the transfer and lay it face down. And I'm going to try and center this as best I can. Looking good. And I'm going to grab a burnisher and I'm going to carefully burnish this down. Don't want air bubbles or they will not transfer your image well. So just carefully burnish. So now comes the waiting game. Now that our image is in here, it's pressed down beautifully, there's no air bubbles. It will take between two and 12 hours for this to dry and to transfer onto the painted surface. So at this point, we just wanna be patient and wait. What I'm going to do at this point is paint the sides of my tray and just let this dry and then we'll come back and rub it off and I will do the big reveal. I'm going to work on this. In the meantime, and this is Amy Howard's One Step, let's see what color this one is, Massey Hill, M-A-S-S-E-Y-H-I-L-L. -L. And it's a pretty orange and it will match really nicely to the inside of my image. So I'm gonna do two coats of this. So I'm just gonna flip this over and take the sticker off and paint the bottom. Now this tray, you could add handles to the sides if you want. You could add little feet if you wanted. Just kind of depends how you want to use this. Um, and you know, with these transfers, you can use them on furniture. You do not have to just use them on decorative items. You can actually use put a transfer on children's furniture. You could put them on a table, the top of a table, the seat of a chair, whatever you feel like using it on. You could make Halloween signs so it doesn't have to be a tray. You could hang something outside your house on your door, all kinds of goodies. So use your imagination and just have fun with it. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and do another coat. We waited 12 hours for the image to dry and transfer to the base. And now it's time to take this off and finish up, okay? To do this part, you need a spray bottle and a wet cloth, a lint-free rag, a wet one. Okay, let's start spraying. Kind of coat this pretty well. can see the image starting to show through and you take your cloth and you rub. See how that's coming through? Keep spraying it. And continue to rub. You'll see kind of a, a light white that's still the paper. So get that off without rubbing too, too hard. Oops, now as you find, be careful, some of it does kind of pop off. But you know what, this is, good. This is a vintage image. I'm just going to go with it, not worry about it, and keep rubbing. This will still be darling.
Give it a good spray so you don't have to rub too hard. It's so cute. It's like all of a sudden this fabulous little image is appearing. Once all the paper's off, I'm going to paint the rest of this black. I could even fill in a little bit over this area that was lifted on the black, it's so no big deal. I would say the trick to this probably is to have your piece printed on probably just a most basic piece of paper, something that is not too thick that you have to really rub through so that you feel like you may rub too hard on it. I think this paper is a little thicker than I've done in the past. I'm gonna come in and fill in some of this black and then we will finish up. Just gonna fill it in with my one step paint and I knew I had to do that anyway and I'm just gonna probably fill in a little tiny bit maybe where I lost a little bit of paint. But I'm just gonna use an artist brush and get right in here and it should be just fine. So cute, I love this. See, I'm filling in, it looks great. Super cute. So this is still aged, and what I'm going to do is seal the image. I like it this way, so I'm gonna seal the image with my matte sealer. So it dries clear and it dries matte. So just brush it over. You can do two coats of the sealer. You don't have to do it over your one step, but you certainly can. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just going up the sides. And then we will come back and I'm still going to age it a tiny bit. So we'll come back with some light wax, dark wax, and some dust of ages. Okay, I think I've just I've decided that to continue to finish this piece, I'm going to use Amy Howard's gel stain in Kensington Black. But what I'm going to do is I am going to take my my foam brush and I am going to add it now that this is dry. I will start on the outsides and I'm going to add it everywhere on the outsides and then we'll wipe it back. This is just to give it a little more depth. So you add your gel stain onto your piece, take a clean rag and wipe it back. Add it to the side and wipe it back just with a clean rag. Turn it to the other side. Add 
wipe it on and wipe it off. It's just giving it a little more age, a little more finished look. And from here we will add the waxes and the dust of ages. Don't wait too long to wipe it off. You don't want it to dry before you can get to it. And then go ahead and put it over the whole thing. And wipe. You can add a little water to it like I just did if it's feeling too dry and you want more off. A little bit more in the center. getting older, a little spookier. We'll let this dry up really well and then we will come back and finish with our waxes and our dust. We start with Amy Howard's light wax and we always use our own brush for the light wax. We always offload and we just carefully add it everywhere. This will help protect it, give it a good wax coating. It will dry hard and it will then also accept the dark wax, which you wanna use in conjunction with the light wax. You never wanna use just dark, dark wax. Um, that's not really what it's for, it's more of an accent wax. But you always wanna use your light wax. And your dark wax is, like I said, the accent that you just add here and there to create more of an aged finish. Okay. Okay, I feel it everywhere. Let this dry a bit, let it come to tack feels dry, cool to the touch, it's not as greasy. So now we use the dark wax. Load up, offload. And this is where we use the dark wax on the edges, maybe just a little tiny bit in there to give it a little bit of age, but really it's mostly just kind of on the edges where your piece would have gotten a little bit dirtier or would have been touched quite a bit. So let's start like that. I can see it, but honestly the camera does not pick it up very well. I really don't think you'll be able to see it, but it is in there. 
It's a little darker in here. It's a little darker in some of these little areas. The edges are a little bit darker. So that's what that does. Let this come to tack and we are going to add our dust of ages. And that is the final step. Now the dust of ages will work with the wax. It'll give it a little extra uh, kind of a grayed dusty finish, which is actually lovely, especially on carved pieces where it can kind of get into some of the crevices. But I'm gonna do it here too because I want this to be kind of a little bit crustier. And I just like how it works with the wax. So generously just put it everywhere. We are going to be buffing it off. So just kind of work it in. And I'm going to add it to the outside. Now, if you wanted to have a more of a pristine tray, you certainly don't have to add all of this dust and uh, even really the waxes because you could always just seal it with the matte sealer and call it a day. But because this turned a little more rustic, I decided I'm just gonna go with it and make it a little more rustic. So really there are no major mistakes. Even if some of this starts to peel off, take it to its advantage. And um, I would just suggest using thinner paper. Now let me grab a rag, a clean rag. We are going to wad it up in our hand. And what we do is with a kind of a hit drag motion, like you're uh, polishing a shoe, that's how we get it off. So you just start working it off. And you will see how this kind of stays in the corners, kind of gets in the wax and creates a slightly grayed color in the wax. Continue to just buff the whole outside of the tray. This will come to a really pretty sheen. Can you see that sheen on there? So it's no longer just a flat mat. created our cute little scary cat Halloween tray. There you go. Enjoy. Serve your kids the candy on this. Serve your friend a spice cider or a nice glass of wine. Whatever you want to use it for. Well, I hope you enjoyed this many steps in creating a fun little keepsake for Halloween. You want to get Amy Howard's copycat and then the sky's the limit. You can create whatever you want. And so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you feel like you would like to try something like this. It's really fun and you really, really can do anything with it. So try it on a piece of furniture. I think maybe I'll do that next. 
But thanks again for joining me so much. I'm Mary Corrado, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.